the V shape for this assignment is pretty difficult. Um, so I go ahead and I add in a little grid work um, to help me make sure that my measurements are more precise. Okay, some of these dimensions, you'll see that they didn't include hidden lines to show that information right there. So I dropped those straight down with vertical lines. Um, I also, all of my height dimensions, I brought over horizontally to a vertical line that I helped sketch out on this side of my drawing. Okay, now I'll be able to make sure that I'm having accurate measurements because I won't be accidentally tilting my dividers getting a longer dimension or shorter dimension than what I intended. Okay, everything works out beautifully dimension-wise if you're keeping them horizontal and vertical dimensions. So with letter C, I have a top view and a front view. Um, and it looks like the depth of the item stays consistent throughout. Okay, but the height and the width changes. And notice that at the bottom bit, it doesn't turn solid until the very bottom. So for this particular assignment, for this particular shape, I'm actually gonna enclose the bottom of my glass box as well as the top uh, when I take my measurements. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my depth measurement. And remember, we have to double this as according to our directions. So I take that measurement and I rock it and twirl and press down so that I have a tiny little pinhole. And then I just created that dimension. That's my H pencil. I got to get rid of that for a second. Make sure you're using the right pencil. Okay, and that is my total depth. For the height of the object, I'm going to start at this point O. Double check, that is the same height. Okay, and I am going to transfer that dimension. And finally, my width, I'm going to do it right up here on the top for the entire width of the item. Make sure that my paper is flat. Okay. And I'm going to create my glass box. Okay, so you can see that I created all six sides of my glass box, okay, and you can see through it. And the reason that we need that is these back edges right here, um, it can get a little bit creative and start getting really off kilter if you don't put that inside of a boundary, and then it'll be wrong. So now that I have that, I apologize, I'm gonna move my camera down just a little bit. Here we go. Um, now that we have that, I can start taking some of the, the height and the width dimensions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom height for the bottom of the V. Okay, double checking. Bring that up. Twirl. Press. Okay. The other height dimension that we need is this one right here. So I'm going to take that and it should be close to the same. There we go. Take that measurement from the top. Twirl. Press. And 
then this one I'm going to already transfer to the side because the side of the V right here would be touching this side of the glass box. I'm going to come back with my object line and darken in what I know belongs there. Because you can see already that I have a bunch of lines and I still don't even have the shape of that V yet. So I darkened in what I knew were going to be object lines, which would be what I could see of the edges that we've already defined. Now it's time for me to start changing up my width on objects. Okay, so this dimension, and we're going to take a bunch of these dimensions and just kind of create a grid on the front of the object here. One, two. bring that up. Okay, that creates this solid line here. Boom. Okay, the next dimension I'm going to need is this top one. And because I have so many lines right here, it's just safer for me to draw it down here and use my construction weight line to transfer that up and over. Whenever we're doing mechanical drafting, it's important to remember that this is always about precision. It is not a race to be first. It's an attempt to be accurate. Okay, so take the time to double check. Take the time to make sure that your dial, your dividers aren't, you know, jumping open. Um, I think I'm gonna wanna put this side also. So I'm going to, again, come over and it should be the same dimension which it is and I'm going to walk that piece one two so you're just trying to make sure you have nice clean lines I'm using my 30 degree angle on my triangle. Okay, I can see I have a little spill over there, so I'm going to write the moment that you notice it. Don't say, oh, I'll come back for that. Just take care of it right away, and you won't have to come back for that. Okay, the next measurement. So, I'm pretty sure you're tired of listening to my voice. My voice is getting tired of talking. So I'm going to draw while you can watch um, and follow along. Just hit pause anytime you need to do a step and feel free to rewind and back up. But I will try to make sure that I'm gesturing, but to save some voice and to save you um, your sanity from having to listen to me, I'm just going to go ahead and draw this and let you watch and play along.
So that is the end of my tutorial for creating this V shape um, using your dividers in an isometric view. Important things to remember, set up your grid, okay? If you're measuring horizontally versus against an angle, it'll work so much better. 
Create the bottom and the back of your glass box. Make sure that you're staying within your boundaries. Lines that are parallel should stay parallel for the entire product. Make sure you clean up as you go. Make sure you have clean intersections and just take the time to double check the dimensions. You often saw me checking here and on the top view to make sure I still had the same dimension before I put it on my drawing. If you invest the time at the beginning, okay, you won't have to redo or revise very often.